Evening folks, welcome. Hopefully my phone doesn't die. I've got a 19% left on the, on the battery, but I'm not going to sit and wait. So, welcome Everyday KT number 71. And uh, as you can see, today we're talking about drive and motivation. Now, there's a reason behind that. Uh, this afternoon, I know, uh, yesterday, I got a, a text from a, uh, a friend of mine's grandson who just made his Eagle Scout in the next town over. Last summer he asked if I could help with his Eagle Scout project and you know I helped him get everything done and I got the message today that or yesterday that he actually passes Border View and he's going to have his Court of Honor here in um, the next uh, whenever as soon as we can get it scheduled. So that is why we're talking about drive and motivation. So, they're, they're kind of two different things, sort of, but not really. Um, the, what I'm talking about is, what is it that, that gets you doing what it is that you do? What is it that compels you to be who you are? You know, what, what's that thing that, you know, makes you you? What, 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 what makes you do your best? What makes you feel at your best? What... Drive-ovation. Yes, that's a word. That and shenaniganizing. Yes, Chris. <sighs> hey, Mike, Chris, Kevin, Angela, the whole the whole crew's here. So first off, that's the fastest I think we've gotten to seven people, so I'll raise my glass to you. I also got a, had a great day today, landed a new client, did a seminar on how to do live streaming, everything. So it was a decent day. So, drive and motivation. So, as you've heard me talk about over and over and over, it's all about you. You know, what, what keeps you going, what motivates you, what compels you to do the things that you want to do. Now, how this ties into the kilt, it's, for me, very, very cut and dry. It's very simple. You know, I, you know when I find something that I really want to do and I'm really into it, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for it. And that drive and that motivation is, you know, it's key to a lot of the things that I do in my life. Um, what happens, though, is unfortunately a lot of people, they get hindered in their, their progress towards accomplishing that goal. There, there's some kind of anxiety, some kind of self-consciousness, some kind of something that is preventing them from succeeding. So, by wearing my kilt, you know... You know, wearing a kilt, as all of you know, the first few times you wear it, it's kind of a big deal. You know, you've got a lot of things you've got to deal with, social stigmas, you know, personal decisions, what your friends think, what your family thinks, all of that crap. You know, all of the social external stuff, which ultimately doesn't mean a damn thing, because we all know the thing about opinions, everybody's got them, we all know what they smell like. So, what... How does that and drive work together and motivation? Well, to accomplish your goals and to get that motivation and drive, you need confidence. And nothing on this planet shows confidence more than a guy wearing a kilt anywhere. And I'm not just talking about Walmart or, or um, uh, the Ren Fair or Burns Night. I'm talking he gets on the bus in his kilt. He's out shoveling the snow in his kilt. He's going to Walmart with the kids to get their lunch for the next day in his kilt. That, that's confidence because he doesn't give a rat's ass what the world thinks. He's who he is. He's going to do what he's going to do. And that's it. And once you can see that confidence, you know, that, that confidence allows him or her to accomplish those goals. To get past all of the barriers, um usually self-inflicted barriers, but barriers nonetheless to accomplishing the goals, to, like I've said, you know, the same examples, you know, finish, do the job, you know, do, you know, get the, get that raise, get that new job, get, you know, get that date with whomever that person is that you were afraid to talk to, um, get up on stage and give that presentation to that group of people that you've been wanting to talk to forever and have been asking you to talk because they think you're an awesome person, 
but you've been afraid to. That is where the kilt ties into drive and motivation. What it does is it helps build up your self-confidence and your ability to execute on those things that you feel motivated to do. So, <clears throat> Mike, yes, well, fact. There you go, right there. Mike Krause, ladies and gentlemen, rarely wears underwear. That's awesome. Thank you, Mike, for sharing that. Happy that I'm in, not in Tulsa right now because I'm sure that when M reads this, well, there might be a small explosion. So, how does all this work together towards you as people in kilts watching my videos? Well, some of you, you know, already have that confidence and you already have that ability to up and go and do whatever, whenever, however, as you see fit. Yeah, Mike, that's exactly right. So, what that also means is that it's the rest of you who are still in that 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 weird phase where you're like, I've got a kilt, I like wearing it, I want to do these things, but I'm kind of afraid to, but not really. It's kind of like that plateau you've reached where you're like, yes, I'm going to go buy the kilt. Yes, I'm going to put it on. Yes maybe well that's the plateau and I, I spoke about this in a different one you know that plateau is not just confidence it's your motivation it's your drive it's it's what's happening in your life it's like yes 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 well let's just stop here for a little bit and wait and see what happens and hopefully things will get easier well they don't it does not get easier the only time the, the only way it gets easier if you get off your ass and make it easier by doing the things that are not easy you know brain surgery is hard but it's easy if you've done it 350 times you know tying a bowlin with your eyes closed is very hard unless you've done it a thousand times wearing a kilt anywhere the first time is very hard because you have to deal with all the crap that happens it's like wow that's weird that guy's never done that before so that's the plateau that's where the drive, the motivation, it all kind of planes out, stops. You still want to do all these things. You still want to kick some ass, but you're not because you're afraid to move on. And that happens to everybody all, all constantly. Now, and then once you finally realize, like, oh, I can't do this. You know, I'm going to easily, you know, I'm going to put my kilt on. I'm going to go to the store. And you do it again, and again, and now sudden, boom, look, it's easy. Okay, now what? What else is easy? Okay, so next plateau. Kilt, no problem. Got all that stuff done. Driving the motivation, boom. Got it again. All of a sudden, whoop, next plateau. How do you overcome that? Well, okay. You know what? If you can go walk, if, you, if you're walking down the road with a kilt and not worried about it, you can, oh, plateau. Oh, job. I need a raise. Haven't had one in three years. Need a raise. Got to go to the boss. Ask for a raise. Only thing stopping you is you. Oh, girl over there, real pretty. Want to go talk to her? Oh, only thing stopping you is you. You know, all of these things are easy. Yes, Mike, that's why that tattoo, that, that phrase is tattooed on my leg. Do it or not, there is no try. Because if you try, you're accepting failure before you even step out of the gate. So you do it. And that's how it all ties back into the kilt. Because, yeah, it's just a piece of clothes. But there's a whole lot of crap wrapped around it that people have to deal with because it's not common. It's not something a lot of people are used to, and there's a lot of negative stereotypes and negative stigmas wrapped around a man walking around in a skirt. Got to get over those things. So, that comes back to drive and motivation. Once you hit those plateaus, you just, you know, build up that courage again. Keep going. And you're going to kick some ass. It's going to be awesome. So, I'm going to talk about this for hours and hours and hours. Somebody throw out a kiltology before I start boring people. Um, Mike, definitely, definitely do.
So, Mike, uh, Kiltology number one. So, Mike, um, don't throw the pants out. Keep them, but don't chuck them. Because... You might need them because what if you have to do work on the truck? You have to do work in the basement. You have to do work on the roof. You have to do work out in the woods. It's raining and muddy and gross outside. You don't want to put that kilt through all that crap. That's why you still have pants. Unless you're riding a horse, then of course that's why pants were invented for the most part is to wear horses and not be naked. So um, Angela got in first with volume one. First page I opened. Yes, Mike, that's how it works. Ah, this goes back to exactly what I was just saying. Don't why you don't chuck your kilt, your uh, your pants. So, kiltology number ninety-seven. What's the difference between pants and a kilt? And as you can see here, if you look, that is not a typo right there. That's how the word pants is spelled in all of my kiltology books and the kilttruck.com website. You type in pants and it always comes up spelled that way. So what's the difference between pants and a kilt? A pair of pants, which is filthy, battered, worn, and beat to hell, is generally retired to the orange oil change rag bin as, as they are near the end of their useful life. Got real quick. So a kilt in the same condition is most likely just recovering from a festival or kilt night and is simply in need of a quick washing before the next kilt night. So, I can't read you because my uh, battery's almost dead there, but um, I will see all of you tomorrow night. Be strong. Put a kilt on. And uh, tell me some cool stories. Uh, I haven't gotten any. I've gotten two good stories recently. Uh, I'd love to hear some more good kilt stories, uh, or any kind of stories in that matter. So, uh, just shoot me some good stories in the comments, and uh, we'll see what kind of shenanigans we can get up to. Take care.